Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. Sometimes as hard as we try to stay organized, things find a way to become a disaster again. So in today's video, I'm reorganizing our pantry, addressing my chaotic crafts, and creating a better system for the kids' cupboard in our kitchen. I hope you find this video motivating and satisfying, so let's get into this. If you are new here, I'd like to welcome you to my motherhood channel. My name is Emily and I am a pregnant mom of a sweet three-year-old. My little family is currently living at my parents' house as we wait for our new build to be completed shortly after I give birth. I do have to say I am going to miss this walk-in pantry, but I will definitely make do with our little one. I can't wait to organize our new home and bring you along with me. I post videos every Monday and Friday on a variety of motherhood content, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you stick around. About a year ago is when I organized this pantry for the first time. I will link that video up above if you want to see more of a deep clean of this pantry. With the exception of the OXO or OXO containers, I don't really know what they're supposed to be called, most of the organizational pieces are from the Dollar Tree. The tiered can holders, the plastic can holders, the cereal containers with the gray plastic lids, and the skinny handled plastic containers. Hopefully the pantry will stay this way as long as possible, but you never know. Moving on, it's a new day and I've managed to find enough energy to try and tackle organizing my crafting supplies along with some of my daughter Aubrey's belongings. The downstairs bedroom at my parents' house is where a lot of my frequently used crafting supplies have been accumulating, but things have gotten a little bit out of hand. So I brought down all of my stored supplies to eventually add to and organize and got to work. Honestly, this was pretty overwhelming. It's one thing to organize Aubrey's various toys, 
But craft supplies are something else. There are so many different tools and scraps and materials to keep track of, but I never seem to have the perfect storage system. Things just get piled on top of each other. Hopefully in our new home, I will find something that works for me and my supplies. During Aubrey's nap, I was able to separate her toys, some of my recently purchased kitchen supplies, and giveaway items. I also collected some things that I've planned specific crafts for, but I still had to go through a lot, like some DIYs from previous parties. Speaking of which, I feel bad recycling some of these crafts. I keep thinking, oh, I could repeat the construction theme for Jack's first birthday or save the gender reveal decoration for a future pregnancy. But I realize that both crafts are very inexpensive to make and only create clutter. So sometimes having a more peaceful space is more important than a $5 craft. Later that evening, I managed to pretty much find a space for everything, which will hopefully make our future move and craft organization a little bit easier. For my last organizational project, I decided to tackle a little cupboard in my parents' kitchen um, that they use for kid items. As I was cleaning it out, I came across this item that TikTok made me buy, and I will be doing a review on this in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. Despite me wearing the same shirt as some of my previous clips, let it be known that this is indeed a different day. I am not superwoman and I couldn't manage to organize all of my crafts and do this on the same day. I think watching YouTube videos can sometimes be discouraging if you think everything is magically done all at once. So know that even if it takes you a week to complete a small project, you are still enough and better off than doing nothing at all. To create a more functional space, I decided to reuse this easy Dollar Tree DIY that I made for two previous parties. It is just a little foam board with some contact paper on it. I measured the space in the cupboard and cut this board to size to create two dividers.
added more contact paper on the back side of the foam board and let it extend on both ends to secure it in place on the shelf and ceiling of the cupboard. If this wasn't going to be a temporary fix, or if this was in a more visible space, I would have wrapped the entire board with the same wood grain contact paper so that none of the foam would be visible. But honestly, the functionality was more important to me than the aesthetic in this case. The bottom shelf was a little more difficult to organize, but with a little help from a Dollar Tree shelf insert, more space was created, making it more functional. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful and motivating. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.